Hi, in this video, we're looking at double replacement reactions, which are sometimes called precipitation reactions. And it's because they form a precipitate. A precipitate is just a solid, insoluble ionic compound that's formed as a product of one of these reactions. Uh, and so here's a visual of what a double replacement reaction looks like. You have two ionic compounds. Don't forget an ionic compound is something that's made up of a metal and a nonmetal. Um, and the metals switch places. And these are your products. Now, one of these two ionic compounds is not going to be soluble in water. And what that means is it doesn't dissolve. And so usually what ends up happening is that just sinks to the bottom of whatever beaker or flask you're conducting this reaction in. And so let's look at some examples of double replacement reactions. Let's predict their products, and then we'll balance the equations. So this is uh, copper 2 chloride, CuCl2. Uh, with sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Now it's a good idea to, and this is my suggestion, it's a good idea to, just above these, write the charge of each of these ions. So if you look at copper on the periodic table, it could e be either plus one or plus two, so you really have to look at what it's bonded with. Chloride is in group 17, and therefore chloride will always have a minus one charge. There are two of them to balance out whatever the charge on this one copper ion is. And so therefore that must mean that this is copper plus two because two and two negative ones would neutralize this compound. So this is copper two chloride. Um, over here, we've got sodium and sodium's in group one. It's not a transition metal that's multivalent. So sodium is a plus one ion. This here is a polyatomic ion. Uh, table 5 will help you, or just a listing of polyatomic ions if you're not taking my class and you don't know what table 5 is. Uh, this is a negative 1 ion. You can look that up, or maybe you'll have that memorized at this point. Now, this is, this is going to help us figure out what the new product formulas will be, because what we're essentially doing is taking uh, the front of the first uh, formula and putting it with the back end of the second formula. And... Uh, the same is true in the other direction. The front of the second formula will go with the back of the first formula. So let's put Cu2 plus and OH1 minus together first. Uh, let's start by writing out our whole equation because we're going to end up having to balance this too. So here are our two reactants again. Doesn't matter what order you put the products or the reactants in as long as they're on the right side of the equation, that's okay. Uh, copper 2 plus with OH1 minus would form CuOH2. Uh, and then my other product is going to be sodium and a plus one with Cl, chloride, uh, Cl minus one. So that's just regular NaCl. Okay, now obviously you can see that this isn't balanced, so we have to balance this. Um, now I'm going to drop the line and list out all the uh, elements on this one, but really at this point you should be faster at doing these. You might be able to just do this quick in your head. Um, if you need to, skip ahead in the video till, to the next problem. But my suggestion with polyatomic ions, if they stay together like hydroxide does here, is that you list it as if it's an element. So when I list out my uh, substances in this, I'm going to list OH as though it's an element. It's a little trick. C-U-C-L, N-A, and OH. Okay, on the left I have one chlorine, or one copper, two chlorines, one sodium, one hydroxide. On the right, I've got one copper, one chlorine, one sodium, and two hydroxides. So you can start with the chlorines or the hydroxides. It doesn't much matter. Uh, on the right side, if you put a two in front of NaCl, that'll make each of these a two. And then if you put a two in front of NaOH, that'll make each of these a two. And that should balance the equation there. So that's it. Uh, CuCl2 plus two NaOH make CuOH2 and 2NaCl. All right, here's another one. Potassium sulfate and barium chloride. Um, these are the names, so we have to come up with the formulas. So potassium is K with a plus one charge because it's in group one. Sulfate, again, if you need to reference that polyatomic ion list, go ahead and do that, but you might have this memorized. Hopefully you do. It's SO4 with a negative two charge. Uh, barium is BA, it's in group 2, so it gets a plus 2 charge. And chloride is Cl with a minus 1, just like in the last problem. So let's put together the formulas for our two reactants, and then we'll figure out what the two product formulas would be. Potassium sulfate, if you just crisscross the charges, 
you get K2SO4. So there's potassium sulfate's formula. Then you've also got barium chloride, so that's a 2 plus with a 1 minus. That's got to be BaCl2. Okay, so these are our two pr uh, reactants. Let's come up with the products now. Again, it doesn't matter which order you put the two products in, but let's put barium with sulfate. Uh, this is a plus 2 with a minus 2. So I just need one of each. That's BaSO4. Now again, if you're looking at this, we just have one of each on the left side, and that's good. So this already so far is balanced. But what is the formula for potassium chloride? Well, that's not going to be K2Cl2. It's just going to be KCl because they just have a plus one and a minus one charge. So you just need one of each. Now the way to balance this, and hopefully you're seeing this really quickly, if you notice we've got two chlorides on the left and only one on the right, two potassiums on the left and only one on the right, we just balance it by putting a two coefficient in front of KCl, and now we're good to go. So uh, that's kind of it for double replacement reactions. Sometimes you'll be given the two formulas and just have to come up with what the two products are. For that, it's more uh, complicated than just switching around the letters for the elements. You have to look at the charges of, of these ions uh, to come up with the right formula for the products. Thank you.